Today, I'm gonna to give you a great way to get better at logo design. Before we begin, I wanted to mention this video sponsor, Skillshare.com, which is an online learning community for creators with over 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. So whether you want to fuel your curiosity, your creativity, or even your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to do just that. For instance, you're about to watch my logo design tutorial, but you could watch this full logo design course at Skillshare. Skillshare is also super affordable with an annual subscription of being less than 10 bucks a month. But if you're one of the first 500 people to click on the link here in the description in YouTube, then you get the first two months 100% free. So join up. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of CourseCentral.com. So one of the things that I commonly see among new designers or aspiring logo designers specifically is they have a hard time coming up with ideas, like unique ideas for logo designs. And this is one technique that I'm going to show you that will help you and train your brain to, you know, through repetition to try to see uh, different ideas inside logo designs that you can execute. And so here's how it works. Basically, we're gonna have two tabs in a browser window. The first one will be a random noun generator, and the other one will be a random word generator. Now, the random noun will hopefully generate a physical, tangible object of some sort, some sort of random thing. And we, our, our goal is to depict that some way visually within the random word that's generated in the second tab. All right, so this will really help you try to see either through the negative space between the letters or through the letter forms themselves, try to execute a, an idea that somehow relates to that noun. All right, so I want you to follow along with this and I'm gonna show you what I came up with. It's not easy. Uh, and yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. Make sure to subscribe though first and yeah, let's do this. All right, so I have a random noun generator in one tab and a random, random word generator here. Um, I just have them two tabs just so we can quickly see what they're gonna be. So the noun that uh, we choose here, that we generate after I click this, it's gonna show up here and they have one there by default called River. Um, and that's gonna be the thing that we have to convey uh, symbolically through the random word that is generated here for the word mark of the logo. So this won't be a combination logo where you, you can represent it through a separate symbol, whatever this noun is. Um, it, it'll have to be represented somehow within the letters that are generated here as a part of this word. So let's go ahead and do this. And hopefully it does generate the type of noun that's a physical, tangible object. Sometimes it'll do something different than that. Like appearance, apparently that's a noun, uh, that, that, but that's not something that's physically tangible. So that's what we want. Solution, kind of, but that's just like water. I don't like that. Um, blood, <sighs> again, you know, blood, it's so fluid, it could look almost like anything. I don't like that. Um, mud, again, another one of those things. Classroom, okay. So there's there's many elements that come to mind that could be representative of a classroom. It's it, outside of just drawing a physical classroom. Um, there's certain things, you know, perhaps um, like an apple or a um, pencil or a scholarly cap or something, I don't know, uh, that could work with that. Um, so we'll, we'll go with that. So for the random word, it's consort, consort, consort <laughs> right here. Um, so yeah, the word doesn't really matter. It's just the fact that we need some letters to work with to try to, to, to represent this idea um, visually, uh, this idea of a classroom inside of the words or the letters, consort. So this is gonna be the practice. So I'm here in Illustrator with a new document and I'm just gonna type in Consort, if I could type. I'm also gonna put in all caps and also a, a title case. Um, and I'm just using a standard type, Myri Myri Myriad Pro. I think that's how you pronounce it. And what I'm looking at, um, this is a pretty typical uh, sans serif type of font with you know, nothing too crazy happening in the letters. So they're all representative pretty well of um, of your regular letters in the alphabet. So um, what you can do at this point, uh, by the way, if I going back here, you can um, just use the same exact words that I'm using. Like the idea that you have to represent is a classroom and um, you have to use concert as the word, or you can just do your own, uh, your own words. Um, it might be interesting to try to do mine, just to pause, try to try to represent what I'm doing here uh, before watching what I do, just to see what you come up with versus what I come up. You can share it on Twitter. My Twitter's in the um, 
uh, the YouTube description, or you can head on over to my Discord server and show us as well, which is also in the YouTube de description. So uh, classroom, how how can we do this? This this is the part, it may take a little bit of time to try to visualize, you know, perhaps what you can possibly do um, for concepts that in this word will relate to classroom. So one thing that I've seen, uh, one idea that I'm seeing here in the N, as I mentioned before, is uh, the pencil, like uh, the tip of a pencil. This could possibly work. And there's actually two of them. I'm not sure if you would wanna represent both of them, but that's one idea. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, yeah, put this up here and I'm, I'm just still going to stare at these to, to see if there's any other ideas that may immediately come. One thing that might be helpful um, to, to, to try to generate ideas that pertain to classroom is uh, to perhaps list out uh, certain nouns that are, that, that are associated or words that are associated with a classroom that you can represent visually. Um, so again, I put pencil here. Um, let me make this a little bit larger. All right, so we have pencil, we have paper, of course. Um, we have, I was gonna say knowledge or, or indoctrination in some cases, uh, but that's really kind of hard to represent. Although you could put a brain, right? So knowledge slash brain, because that's supposed to represent intelligence. <clears throat> um, what else is there? There could be, um, uh, let's see here, Apple, teacher's Apple. Um, what else do we have? We have a, I suck at this type of stuff, by the way. Um, graduation cap, you know, a graduation cap is, it's, it's a real specific thing. You have to design it a very specific way in millions of logos, probably millions, uh, or at least thousands, use the graduation cap. So I'm kind of hesitant on using that. Um, oh yeah, like a light bulb. Because a classroom, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to go off on different tangents here. Because the, the purpose of a classroom is is for knowledge and education. So light bulb, uh, that is commonly referred to or, or, or kind of associated with knowledge or ideas. And so just come up with these ideas, you know, these things that can be represented in a visual way, and just look at your letters. And it may even um, be helpful. Control C, Control F there to replicate that. To um, I'm gonna go. I have to go to my favorite font, Montserrat. Of course I do. Um, maybe we make them real thick, and I uh, just to get a different look at something um, that could work here to represent the idea of a classroom. So another thing I had that was just it was too obvious though is you know taking the O and making it an apple. That's just so freaking boring. Um, especially because there's two O's, so that's even worse because you're gonna have one O being here and you can't have two apples looking the same. That's too repetitive for a logo. Um, so at this point, I do only have that one idea, um, which is the pencil in the end here. And that probably wouldn't work so much with the thicker font um, that we have here. So at this point, I may just uh, go ahead and uh, pause the video or speed it up um, while I try to come up with more ideas just by just by looking here. And if you have a pen and paper, you could probably do that a little bit easier just by starting to jot if you prefer, prefer to do that sort of thing. Okay, so I sat here for maybe just two minutes after I paused, um, and I, I made this uh, this this uh, medium font weight for Montserrat, and I also um, took the uh, letter spacing in by negative hundred. Um, just to try to get maybe a, an additional different look. But what I'm going to do at this point, instead of trying to think too much, I'm going to come up with and try to represent the first concept that I had, which is to take uh, this version right here and try to work with the idea of like the pencil thing here. Um, and we'll see how that works. Right now the, the, the letter spacing is off, but I'm not too concerned about that. Maybe I will increase it just a bit. I'm gonna change this to, um, let's see here, optical, and also just back to, to the regular. It still needs to be worked on, but again, I wanna to try to work with this idea of the pencil. So one idea I've had maybe is to represent the pencil tip. 
Now, would I go like this or would I go like this? Well, we'll try both. Is it obvious? Is that obvious that that is a pencil, <laughs> pencil tip? No, I would say not. Now we could still try doing something like this, um, taking the direct selection tool. All right, so that really doesn't work either. Again, sometimes I'll just, I'll take a copy of that though, and I'll keep working with the idea and to see how far I can kind of push this idea and try to get it into a, a, um, some sort of representation that works. Um, I'll leave that back up there. Maybe we could do something like this. So I'm just taking the pen tool. Oh, let me go over here to preferences. Change that to points. All right. And now, you know, uh, some um, pencils, it'll have that, what is that, graphite or whatever, the material at the end that you use to draw with, um, will have like a, a gloss, she, glossy shine to it. So I'm just, I'm working off that idea. Again, this may all completely fail. Now it looks a little bit better actually. To look at smaller sizes. Yeah, that really kind of helped. Um, geez, I like that one a lot. So what I'm gonna do is uh, just save that for now um, and see if we can elaborate further on this concept in some way, shape or form. So we could bring this in possibly. Now, the one thing though, you, you wanna make sure you don't want, when it comes to logo design, you don't want things uh, when, when the logo is scaled down to be real thin because then you won't notice it um, and it will look possibly pretty bad. Um, so what I'll do is move this over perhaps right here and then take these two and drag them out more. There we go. So this is another potential option. Again, you don't want an area right here that's too thin as well. It might be out too far, just a tad bit. All right, so that's two options there. I don't, I want, I don't want these in my site when I'm working on this. On this. Probably my favorite one was like when it was down here, even though things aren't exactly lined up on, these are just kind of rough drafts here at this point. Um, let's see here, what else could we possibly do? Um, what I'll do is I'm gonna take both of these over here and I'm going to just kind of outline this part pretty quickly. There we go. And for now, I'm just gonna make this one white because I have another idea that I want to experiment with. Take this all the way down. Not exactly sure how I would get this one to work. I need to get out our layers here. So window layers. Drag them up. Okay, so all right, can I get this one to work? We'll get our add anchor point tool, put one right here. So initially I'm just gonna hide this part. Okay. That's another idea that I kind of, I, I wanted to at least see if that worked at all. Um, I think it might have potential, especially if we can get this part up to here. This has to come up as well then. Looks kind of ridiculous otherwise. All right, so that's another representation that we could have uh, possibly of um, you know one of our 
uh, correlated items associated with a classroom. Um, I, I'm just gonna, I don't really like that one that much, but I'm gonna move this up over here and tackle one more potential idea for this. So, So, yeah, uh, again, I'm not too sure about these two up here, but um, yeah, I do like this in this possibly. So that's one concept that we can just say, okay, this is something that could be, that we could, could consider or the client could consider in some way, shape or form um, for coming up with an idea. And again, what you come up with might suck. Um, I kind of like the bottom one the most here. Um, but I, uh, it's not for that. It's, it's for you. Even when you're producing something that's kind of, do, it doesn't work well, you're still training your brain and, and you're developing those, uh, those connections in the brain that will help you, um, really try to think outside of the box, especially when you're doing this sort of thing, where we're working with random words and random nouns. Um, I'm going to sit here and come up with some other ideas though, um, to try to represent what we're thinking about. Again, from one concept, you can come up with just a, a million iterations uh, of it, as you can see on the, the right, like we did as well. So literally, I've only been doing this for, what is it? Um, I did pause, so I don't have the full rundown, but like, what, 20 minutes? And I've come up with one, two, three, four different concepts uh, for this. I, I'll be honest, I think the one that I might like the best even though it is using something literal, but it's doing it in a unique way, is probably, oops, and bring it back down, is probably the first one that we came up with, which is the pencil concept. And it's, it's either between, uh, I'll be honest, I like this one the best right here. It's the very first one I came up with, which is really funny uh, because sometimes it works out like that. Yeah, I really like that. So. Uh, if we go to file new and we go to just create, paste that bad boy in there. Wow, I really like that actually. Um, and at this point you would wanna make sure all your letter spacing is, is, is evened up and if you wanted to be able to use it somewhere, uh, we have this view, snap the pixels, turn it off. You'd really want to spend time, you know, making sure everything is evened up and all your angles. Like we can go to window where we go. We go to our transform pathfinder. Now it's now it's a uh, transparent there for that white, which is the negative space. And that would be for the most part it. Aside from making again making sure the the kerning and all that is good. All right, so hopefully you found that interesting and perhaps useful, and it's another technique that you'll be able to use going forward to try to help you think outside of the box. All right, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you soon.